Okay, hey you two. What is up? It is Kalia here, aka the Wiz Kalia, and I'm coming at you guys today with a silly video slash tag. I promised my girl Zaida, and um I keep a promise always. But I wanted to do this tag when I was listening to her. If you guys did not see her video where her 15, 15 question tag, it was hilarious. So um <laughs> I was laughing like the whole way through. I thought it was so funny. Um but you know she's so real so it was just nice listening to the whole video. So I figured while I do the tag I could do a silly video for one of my customs. I this is a custom for the Eastern Scope by Michelle Fagan and um the mommy just got some pictures earlier today so I could approve and like move on and do a silly later. This is kind of like a midway ceiling. Um, <clears throat> she has a little, I don't want to say a long way to go. She doesn't have a long way to go. You don't want the mommy to hear that. <laughs> no, <laughs> she doesn't have a ton of ways to go, but she definitely has some ways to go. She is not complete. This is kind of like, so this is like a midway sealer. Um, the mommy asked for some kind of like details midway, um, uh, like recently. So I had to, um, switch up a little bit of the my my timeline plan or whatever of what I was doing um so I can make sure that her details that she requested were put under the skin she requested some moles and some freckles and things of that nature so um I'm hoping you can see a really really clear picture and of course I'll take a picture afterwards and try to do a close-up if I can um, but anyway, let me get into this tag because it is like, I think it's like 15 questions. I don't know. I wrote them down as I was watching Saida's video. So, and I don't know who did it. So I'm kind of like 15 Saida's questions, but I don't, I don't, because I know she wasn't sure who did it either. So whoever did it, thank you. These are some good questions and they're personal. They're not really reborn related. I don't think so. Anyway, um, the first question is one item you can't leave the house without and of course my answer is cell phone i feel like that's probably most people's answer um i mean besides like depending on where you're going if you're dropping your kids off at school of course i don't want to leave my twins at home but you know what i mean something like that but it's probably definitely going to be my cell phone um it's ugh. there's been days where i've left my cell phone and gone to work and like those days are horrible like it's like i don't know it's terrible um how codependent you know what I mean? On technology, <laughs> I am, or we are, you know, so. But, um, next question. Last time I really cried. <sighs> At first I was thinking, oh, I don't know, like, um, I have no idea. But then I was like, no, actually, uh, I think you cried, <laughs> um, like two months ago. And, um, it was, like, over something personal, but, like, a personal thing I was dealing with. But I don't know if I cried, like, sobbing, like, you know what I mean, dead or that type of cry. But, um, I think I shed some tears recently, so maybe a couple months ago. I don't, I feel like I'm emotional, but I don't cry, I don't like to cry. So, if I can help crying, I won't do it. Um... And then it says, best memory that makes you smile. Um, this one's hard because I have like a ton. So it's like, I feel like I can't pick one, but I can mention some. Um, yeah, that's such a hard question. Like, which memory makes you smile? Uh, the best memory. I don't know if I have the best. I mean, uh, when me and Latoya met, like, met in person for the first time. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Uh... When the twins graduated kindergarten, that always makes me smile because it was kind of funny. Um, trying to think of some other ones. When I went abroad, you know what I mean? Definitely like when I went to Africa, that's always something that would make me smile. Like that memory. I'm trying to think like that's a, such a broad question because, you know, when you I don't know, I, I tend to think of like family memories like movie night or game night or something like that you know what I mean but um let me see what the next question is recent obsession um I 
guess I'll do rewards and for myself. For myself, my recent obsession, I was going to say reading, but I'm, I'm a reader anyway. But I will say this, though. A while ago, LaToya got us a Kindle Unlimited um, subscription for reading, and it had Audible books. So I was like, oh, my God, I can listen to books all day now like even when I'm at work so I feel like that's probably like my current obsession aside from listening to Rihanna's new album <laughs> um I love Rihanna like a lot so anytime she has new music out or whatever I'm always listening to one of the songs like on repeat I don't care what anybody says like I like her so if you don't, shut up. <laughs> I was like, I don't want <laughs> that's probably sounded mean, like what? But anyway. But yeah, so like reading books um with uh the audible, like with their narrated, that's definitely a current obsession though. Um I probably read like a book a day, um, or maybe like a book every two days. Like this week I actually got a bad a badge because sometimes it keeps track of like what you do for different things on the app. And it said that I read 10 books this week. And I was like, what? Nice. Sweet. <laughs> so it's actually a much better time, a much, a much better way to pass the time at work than listening to music. I feel like eventually you listen to so much music and um, you're done. You know what I mean? Like, there's only so much you can listen to your favorite playlist. So, so long. Um, it says greatest fear. Hmm. I think my greatest fear would probably have to do with like somehow being separated from my family and like there's absolutely no way to get them or if my kids need help or something like that and it's like being totally helpless in a situation like that. That's probably like a greatest fear. Um, definitely something happened to my kids. Uh, that's probably every mom's greatest fear, though, to be honest. Like, somebody hurting your child, um, or violating them or something like that. That's probably, like, one of my greatest fears. Um, it always, like, you know what I mean? It makes you cringe and stuff like that. Um, trying to think of another one. I think another greatest fear of mine is like um, having regrets. Like uh, I don't like to have regrets, and so I would hate to like be at the end of my life and like wish there was stuff that I did or like really regret, like truly regret not having done something because of fear. If that makes sense, um, that's a uh, fear. It says chronic illness. Because I remember Saida was saying this. I think the question was worded strange because it was like, do you have any illnesses that you suffer from on a daily basis? And I'm assuming that she meant like chronic disease. Um, I have asthma. That's the only thing I can think of that I have to take, you know, daily medication for. Other than that, I don't really have anything. But... It was funny because Saida was saying that she had knee surgery and I kind of forgot about that because I had knee surgery too when I was in college and I remember how she was saying how you just it's always on your mind or you think about it and I know for me like anytime I'm <laughs> approaching stairs or something like that I'm just cautious because I would hate to re-injure my ACL and have to get surgery all over again. That would suck. Um, favorite car? I thought this was such a good question. Um, and I do have the same answer, girl. It's so funny, Saida. Girl, I swear to God, you are my whole girl. But um, I have always loved SUVs, and Jeep has always been my favorite, though. So ever since I was a little kid, I always wanted to have a Jeep. And um, I did for a while, and I'm probably going to get another one pretty soon, as soon as I can. Um, I like the traditional Jeep Cherokee. I like Grand Cherokee, but I think my favorite car of all time would be Jeep Cherokee, like the original one. Because um, <clears throat> I feel like when they made the Grand Cherokee, it's a little bit smaller. 
So whereas I think a, back in the day, the Jeep Cherokee, some of them had a third row in the back. So, um, and I think the next question, I'm not sure I could be wrong, but I know Saida was talking about her first car. And I think that was a question. My first car was a 2001 Nissan Altima. And I was actually really proud of myself because I bought it cash. And, um, but then of course my parents said, let me drive it <laughs> when I was like 17. Um, and I had that car for a long time. Um, I had that car until I was like 19 or 20. Um, or it seemed like a long time. And that's when I was like 20, I, I was a sophomore though. I just know, I just remember I was a sophomore. I'm sorry guys. I didn't even show you the like. I just remember being a sophomore in college. That's when I bought my first Jeep, and I bought a 1999 or 1998 Jeep Cherokee. And the crazy thing was, it only had a hundred and like fifty thousand miles on it. It was so old, but it didn't have that many miles on it. So I was like, "Yes, I'll take it," because it was like all terrain vehicle. It had. Um, it didn't have like any computerization, so it was like completely fitted for off-road adventures. Not that I did that much off-road adventures, but me and my sorority sisters did go camping in it. So I feel like it served its purpose. <laughs> so it was it was a, it was super fun. It didn't have a third row in the back, but when the back seat went down, because the cab in the back was so long, people people always asked me to drive because people would take naps in my car and stuff like that. So. I ended up giving that car up. It actually never died or anything like that. I drove that car until it had like 250 something thousand miles on it or something like that. I know I drove a lot. I used to travel a lot when I was in college. Because <laughs> I was going to say that's a lot of miles. <laughs> but um, it says, who has had a major impact in your life? Um, hmm. I know it's, I feel like I say this a lot though, but, um, <laughs> I was, cause it's, but it is true. It is so true though. I was going to say LaToya, um, but I've known LaToya for a long time. Like it, what I like in hindsight, it doesn't seem that long because life is so short like that. But when I think about how long we've known each other, because if you guys remember when we talked about our story, we were best friends for like three years before we ever got together and um I was really young so I feel like I've known her from the time <laughs> I was a kid to when I kind of grew up I'm still kind of a kid but um I'm an adult kid now <laughs> and I was like I'm a woman but um but I've never had anybody in my life that gave me like the support like withstanding type of like undying unconditional type of support that you know she gives me um until I met her so I feel like she's one of the few people in my life that have never just come through and then like you know kind of like you know how they say people come into your life for a season or whatever and then you know they're gone or whatever that's never been the case for her so she's a rock for me and I think that's one of the reasons why I would say she has had such a huge impact in my life. Um, she is, she's, you know what I mean? She's my mate, she's my lover, but she's, she's also my best friend. So, um, definitely. Who, oh, sorry, I can't read. <laughs> what did you want to be when you grew up or slash vocation? Um... That's a good question. I When I was really little, believe it or not, um, I wanted to be a social worker. Um, and that had to do with um, being adopted, of course. Um, I had a really, really good social worker who came to my aid. And um, I kind of idolized her for a long time. And I think that's why when I was really young, like from the age of like five to maybe until I was like, 13 I did I was like set on it. I used to tell people that and it's so funny because you know can you imagine like 
asking the little kid, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Because most people don't say that. You know what I mean? Most kids are like a firefighter, a police officer, a doctor, whatever. And I was like, I want to be a social worker. And everybody kind of like made this weird face at me. And I think that's why I stopped saying it. Um, <laughs> by the time I got into like, you know, the end of elementary school, like sixth grade. Um, but then I actually started to think about it. Um, and I thought about what I was really passionate about. Um, because I've always been passionate about women and children. So, uh, and I've always been fascinated by the healthcare field. So I know pretty soon, like eventually, like maybe around like, seventh or eighth grade that's when I wanted to be a doctor and I was like oh yeah like I was gung-ho like you know all the way up into college so but of course <laughs> life has plans I think isn't that like a saying when they say like you know if you want to make God laugh or something like that you know plan or something so um that drastically changed for me when I went to Africa and I thought about what I really wanted to do in terms of like um, how do you say it? I thought about what I wanted to do in terms of, oh shoot, <laughs> sorry, I just see something I didn't do. I thought about what I wanted to do in terms of like fundamentals, like what do you want to do with your life, you know, in terms of like, who are you trying to touch or reach or whatever, and I realized I was just really passionate about women and children's health, and it would be so awesome to be like an obstetrician or, you know, in the throes of women's health in terms of like gynecology. Um, but any area, any aspect of that is going to be satisfying. So that's when I like turn my sides and I kind of listen to my best friend and I thought about nursing and stuff. So that's what kind of like took me on that other path. So... If you could turn back time, what would you change? I, to be honest, because I remember Saida was talking about this question, I do not know. Um, I feel like I have a lot of stuff that I can remember happening in my life that I wish didn't happen, but I do know this, like, because I'm a believer in, like, you know, like, nerdy stuff, strength theory. I feel like... It doesn't really matter what you change in the past because like everything happens for a reason and everything happens towards a trajectory that's supposed to happen. I feel like even if I change something, the future would still somehow end up the way it is. Does that make sense? So I feel like there's stuff that I might want to change, but I don't know if changing it would you know, change where I am now, and I wouldn't want it to. I couldn't ask to be in a better place than where I am now. I love, you know, my life where it is now. I absolutely do. So with that, I kind of don't want to change anything. The next question says, what have you done the most as a professional or professionally? Um... I was going to say school. I'm a professional student. It's like, nah. But I have. I've been to school so long. Oh, my Jesus. Um, I would say it should be. It should count as a profession. Um, but um, probably, like, I've done a lot of administrative assistant type work. And then, of course, what I do now, like, in the medical field. So both of those probably because, like, I worked all through college and all that good stuff, so um, there's a lot of office work, stuff like that, but probably what I'm doing now, like in the medical field, so in different aspects, so. Most embarrassing moment. This question is so hard to answer because for me, I'm like a clumsy person, and I know you can't really tell that because you've never seen me like engage in everyday life on the camera like walking and stuff like that but I do lots of stuff like oh my god like for instance I had a really really embarrassing moment <laughs> like a few weeks ago where I went to the bathroom at work right and you know ladies uh you know like those shapewears that you wear and um I'm sure you guys know what the waist trainers are 
you know, the waist trainers and stuff like that. So I have it on. I'm trying to get back in the habit of wearing it and all this stuff. So I'm in the bathroom and I'm putting it back on and I leave, right? Why is my shirt up like this? Like, it's just up. And I didn't even notice it. And I just walk out of the bathroom. And I'm going to my, you know, my office. And then, like, my coworker was like, Teresa, hey, hey, hey. And I was like, what? What's up? And then she's like, you know, she was like, and I still didn't even know what's going on. So I just walk over to her all like, yeah, we're talking. And she just has, she just, it, you know, she just re reached over her desk and was like, <laughs> and I was just like, whoa, holy shit. And, you know, I just passed like maybe four people's offices. Nobody said anything. Everybody stared at me. But you know what? Hey, that, that's my life, you know. I just, I feel like I get caught in stupid, <laughs> like, little instances like that all the time. And it's just like, what the heck? I feel like I don't notice stuff off the back sometimes. I don't even understand why. So, um, I, f I swear to you, I have like a pocket full of like little instances like that. It would be too much to like go through. Um, I had more as a kid, so. <laughs> the other things, I said the other thing, the other question says, what is your best quality guys it's so funny i pre-did two of these limbs and i'm like oh i still have so many questions let me just tidy these up <laughs> i didn't realize how many questions like how long it would take to get through so many questions but um but it's okay it's a really good tag so it says what is your best quality um i feel like i have a, a few good qualities um i'm very loyal like um if I, you know what I mean, if you're in my life and I've determined, like, we're, like, friends and I'm down for the cause, I'm ride or die. That's me. Um, it is what it is. So, for better or for worse. <laughs> so, I think it's a, I think it's a good quality of mine. And I will say, I, I'm a pretty determined person. Um... I do like in other areas, but I feel like stick to is definitely something that that's me. So, and then the last question is the most important slash greatest lesson at this age right now you've learned in your life. So I thought this was a good question because it made me think because Saida was talking about um, letting stuff go. Sorry, here. Excuse me. Sadie was talking about letting stuff go. And I was thinking about how for me, I think, um, because like I'm in this stage where it's like I'm not 30 just yet. I have a couple more years, but I'm not like 21. So I am like, I'm not having, you know what I mean? I'm not old enough to have a middle life crisis to where it's like, Oh my god what have I done with my life I haven't done enough stuff you know like oh I'm depressed but I'm um, but I'm also not young enough to where it's like I'm in this race and I want to get a piece of the pie um I kind of want to chill and I'm like Ugh. but um but I'm learning a lot about myself so I feel like one of the biggest things that I've been learning right now is to kind of accept who I am and own it to my shit so it's kind of like uh a twofer of those things like just really understanding more of who I am and then like being a grown up about it and um and instead of being embarrassed about it or like taken aback by it just embrace who I am so um I don't know why that's happening right now but it's a good thing it's good for me <laughs> it's good for people around me so I'm I'm glad it's happening so but anyways guys I'm done with this kit Thank you so much, Saida, for sharing this tag, girl. Girl. <laughs> Saida had me rolling, though, when she did her questions, y'all. Like, if you didn't watch her video, you gotta watch her video. Um, guys, I hope this, this camera angle worked because, guys, I'm sitting, like, low to the ground. Like, my station, I pulled it out from the wall, and I put the camera back here, so I hope you can see really well. And, um... I will take a picture because I know you can't, you probably can't see closely. I know you can't because the camera's away. But I hope you got to see while I was sealing the baby up. 
and Shauna is the mom. And this baby, her name is Marley. I thought there was a cute name for the kit. So again, this is the Easton kit by Michelle Fagan. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching me sew her up. And she'll be getting more work done on her, so you'll see her again. Uh, she'll have hair and all types of stuff. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed my answers to the tag. So again, thanks, Aida, for doing your video. Whoever created the tag, thank you. I don't know who, but I appreciate it. Um, and just thanks for watching. Thanks to all the subscribers. You guys are awesome. And you guys have a good night. Tomorrow is Friday. Oh, my God. Yes.